Hello racing fans, I'm the Ace of Pace, Ray Wallen. In part one of the good, the bad, and the ugly of early speed, I talked about how to identify the good or strong early speed horses. Today I'm back with part two to discuss the bad and the ugly. To recap the different types of early speed horses that I discussed in part one, the good are strong early speed horses, either horses that can duel or one-dimensional front runners who look to have no pressure in the race. The bad are one-dimensional front runners who will be pressured and fail, and the ugly are habitual quitters or early speed horses that look to get loose on the lead early and then fail without any pressure. Again, today we will focus on the bad and the ugly. Characteristics of weak one-dimensional front runners are they are more often noted as E than EP with queer and speed styles. These are need the lead type of horses, and they fail when pressured. Let's look at a few sample running lines. You want to look at running lines that are similar to the today's conditions. Dirt or turf, sprinter route, and discounting trouble trips. In the first running line, we see a horse that led early, however, was pressured from a length off the lead. This horse used up its energy reserves early and was losing ground by the stretch before giving way to the eventual winner. In the second running line, you can see that the horse ran strongly contested first and second calls only to give way and get beaten by a sizable margin. In the third running line, you see a horse that seems to get loose at the first call, but feels pressure by the second call, which ultimately forces him to expend more energy. He loses ground by the stretch and is ultimately beaten. It is important to note that these one-dimensional front runners with pressure often still find their way into your exotics, even if they're not a contender amongst your selections. Now let's talk about the characteristics of the ugly, the habitual quitters. These are more often noted as E than EP, horses using the queer and speed styles. They can't hold a lead of any size, big or small. They don't need pressure to fail, they're going to do that all on their own. They may negatively impact other speed horses in the race, either by setting fractions that are too fast or causing other strong one-dimensional front runners to expend too much energy early. Let's look at a few examples of habitual quitters. In the first running line, you see a horse that gets to the lead early, and gets to a comfortable lead of two lengths by the second call, where a strong one-dimensional front runner that can get clear without pressure by two lengths is generally tough to beat. The habitual quitter falters without pressure, despite not being challenged. In the second running line, we see a horse that has gotten a big, comfortable lead early and maintains it through the stretch. He quickly loses ground to get caught at the wire despite facing no pressure during the race. In the third running line, we see a horse that gets to lead easily and falters before the stretch, finishing out of the money. Depending on how many races a habitual quitter has run, you will often see a very poor win percentage. Unlike one-dimensional front runners, habitual quitters are less likely to figure in your exactas and trifectas. In upcoming segments, I'll discuss how to pick pace lines for comparison and how to construct pace scenarios. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Google Plus, at US Racing, through my blog, or my new website, www.theaceofpace.com. Thanks for watching.